So how do you go about implementing communism worldwide? What's the strategy? Uh, the strategy or the process is called ideological subversion through Soviet-style pincer military tactics. You know, that's combining uh, Griffin and Besmanov. And so it's a fancy way of saying you have to make the majority feel like they're the minority. You have to pinch them. What do you mean pinch them? You have to pinch the majority in two ways. Through politics or politicians and protesters. You see, the politicians, they're going to propose some social justice liberation reform like you know, something crazy like uh, defund the police based on real legitimate human suffering. It's the human suffering that gives it its uh, air of legitimacy. And then through organized membership, the mass membership groups, uh, you march in the streets and you protest and you rally. First though, fury on the streets. Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter protesters square off Protesters punched, flags burned, and it culminates with a violent confrontation with police. Right. So the silent majority, the average person with no axe to grind, you know, they get caught in the middle. They get pinched. Uh, they look above. They look in the media and, and they see these political speeches and uh, they see these uh, quasi highly respectable spokesmen and women for government, like, you know, people from the World Health Organization or the CDC, or maybe it's their favorite uh, sports league, the NBA, the NFL. A powerful moment of unity as basketball returned last night. Every player, every coach, even the referees took a knee during the national anthem. Players carried protest messages on their jerseys. Uh, or his favorite mind control device like the CIA news stations, uh, um, CNN, MSNBC, CBS. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into an executive session. Um, and they're all calling for socialist legislation. The horrible effects of socialism and communism seem remote, like a hangover you had from tequila back when you were 16. You threw up for two days and swore never again. But in a year, you do. Humans can forget the things that nearly kill them. In the same survey, 72% of all Americans wrongly believe communism killed under 100 million people in the last 100 years. It's more, over 100 million people killed by something that many people today see as nice. Given how modern media and academia deem humans as disposable hazards on an overcrowded planet that will certainly end in 10 years, maybe that's why they romanticize this awful stuff. Thin the herd, as they say. You know, he looks below and he sees you know, mobs of demonstrators out in, out in the streets shouting, you know, uh, different slogan, different communist slogans, right? And so he says to him or herself, um, has everybody gone crazy or is it just me? Now, he's still the majority, but he doesn't know it. He's being duped. He thinks that, you know, he's hopelessly outnumbered. Then he bows the knee to what he thinks is the democratic will of the people. Or the democratic will of the majority. And what does he do? He puts a mark on a ballot that passes further legislation increasing government power. Thus increasing the round table group's control um, and the outer rings of power. And the process starts all over again. New legislation is recommended to solve even more national problems with socialistic solutions. Uh, more mobilizing of the mass membership organization shouting in the streets. Um, trying to have the appearance of the popular support uh, for the new socialist recommendations. More confusion from the, the silent majority not knowing that they are the majority. And you keep repeating this process until the ultimate goal finally gets achieved. Right? New recommendations from above. New demands from below. New legislation gets passed. Over time, socialism is legally and peacefully implemented without the use of violence and in the name of the nation. At the end of the line, they would have it and nobody could say it happened on such and such a date. 